In this video, we're going to talk about the simple pendulum. So let's begin by drawing our vertical line. And let's draw a pendulum. Let's put it at an angle. Let's call this point A, B, and point C. Now, as the pendulum moves from point A to point B, and then to point C, and then as it returns from C to A, that is one complete swing. Now the reason why I need to know what a complete swing is, is because it can help you to determine the period and the frequency of a simple pendulum. The period, represented by capital T, is the time that it takes to make one complete swing. That's going from A to C and then C to A. You can also calculate the period by taking the time and dividing by the number of cycles or the number of complete swings. So the period is measured in units of seconds. So it's the time that it takes to make one complete swing or one complete cycle. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. To calculate the frequency, you could take the number of cycles or complete swings and divide it by the time. The unit of frequency is the reciprocal of the second. It's one over seconds or equivalently hertz. So make sure you understand that the period is the time it takes to make one complete cycle whereas the frequency is the number of cycles that occurs in one second. Now make sure that you're writing this down because you're going to use some of these formulas later uh, when we work on some practice problems. Now in addition to the formulas that we have on the board, there's some other formulas that you may want to add to your list. L is the length of the, the pendulum. The period depends on the length of the pendulum. The period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the gravitational acceleration. So g is the gravitational acceleration of the planet. So the gravitational acceleration for the Earth, as you know, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. So the time it takes to make one complete swing depends on the length of the pendulum and the gravitational acceleration. As you can see, the mass is not part of that equation. Therefore, the period of a simple pendulum is independent of the mass. If you increase the mass of the bob, it's not going to change the period of the pendulum. So when dealing with a simple pendulum, we're assuming that the mass of the string relative to the bob that it's attached to can be ignored. But for a typical test that you might take on this, just know that the period of a simple pendulum doesn't depend on the mass of the bob. It only depends on these two things, the length and the gravitational acceleration. Now, since L is on top of that fraction, increase in L will increase the period. That means that as you increase the length of the string, the time it takes for the bob to go from A to C and then C to A, and that time is going to increase it's going to take longer to make the journey forward and then back. Now, if you increase the gravitational acceleration, let's say if you brought the pendulum to a planet where the gravity is stronger, the period is going to decrease. Because g is in the denominator of that fraction, there's an inverse relationship between g and t. Now, to calculate the frequency, you could use this formula. The frequency is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g over l. So since l is on the bottom, as you increase l, the frequency decreases. So the frequency, the number of cycles that occur in one second, or the number of complete swings that the pendulum makes in a single second, that's inversely related to the length of this the pendulum. But if you increase the gravitational acceleration, the frequency is going to go up. 
So if the period goes up, the frequency goes down. And if the period goes down, the frequency goes up. So frequency and period, they're inversely related. Now let's work on some practice problems. What is the period and frequency of a simple pendulum that is 70 centimeters long on the Earth and on the Moon? So let's begin with a picture. So here is our pendulum. And we're, we're given the length of the pendulum. It's 70 centimeters long, but we want to convert that to meters. So we know that 100 centimeters is equal to a meter. So to convert from centimeters to meters, simply divide by 100. And so the length is going to be 0.70 meters. What formula do we need in order to calculate the period and the frequency? In this problem, to calculate the period, we could use this equation. It's 2 pi times the square root of the length over the gravitational acceleration. Now, on the Earth, we know what the gravitational acceleration is. G is 9.8. So now, we just got to plug in everything into this formula. So it's going to be 2 pi times the square root of 0.7 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So looking at the units, the unit meters will cancel. And then when you take the square root of s squared, it's going to become s eventually. And so the period is going to be in seconds. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. So the period for part A, or when the pendulum is on the Earth, is going to be 1.679 seconds. Now we need to calculate the frequency. The frequency is simply 1 over the period. So it's 1 divided by 1.679 seconds. And you're going to get point five nine five six and then this is in it's going to be seconds to the minus one or hertz so that's the frequency for the first part that is when the pendulum is on the earth now let's move on to the next part so what about if the pendulum is on the moon what will be the period of the simple pendulum now the gravitational acceleration on the moon is about 1.6 meters per second squared. So everything is going to be the same except the value of g. So g is going to be 1.6 instead of 9.8. So in the last problem, the period was, I'm just going to write it here. It was 1.679 seconds. That was on the Earth. Now the period on the moon, let's call it TM, do you think it's going to be greater than 1.679 seconds or less than? Well, as we go from the Earth to the moon, the gravitational acceleration is decreasing. And since that's on the bottom of the fraction, it's inversely related to the period. That means when one goes up, the other goes down. Or when one goes down, the other goes up. So G is decreasing. That means that the period is going to increase. So on the moon, it's going to take a longer time to make a complete swing. So we should get an answer that's bigger than 1.679 seconds. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So this is going to be 4.16 seconds. So as you can see, it's much bigger than 1.679 seconds. So as the gravitational acceleration decreases, the period is going to increase. They're inversely related. Now let's calculate the frequency. So the frequency is going to be 1 over the period 
So that's 1 over 4.16 seconds. And that's going to be 0.24 hertz. So that's the frequency of the pendulum on the moon. Let's move on to our next problem. A pendulum makes 42 cycles in 63 seconds. What is the period and frequency of the pendulum? The period is going to be the time divided by the number of cycles. So we have 42 cycles occurring in a time period of 63 seconds. So if we take 63 divided by 42, or 63 seconds divided by 42 cycles, we get that there's 1.5 seconds per cycle. So the time that it takes to make one complete cycle is 1.5 seconds. So thus we could say that the period is 1.5 seconds. So that's the answer for the first part of part A. So now we can calculate the frequency. The frequency is one over the period, so it's one over 1.5 seconds. And you're gonna get 0.6 repeating, which we could round that to 0.67. And you could say the units are seconds to the minus one or hertz. So what this means is that there's 0.67 cycles that are occurring every second. So the units here, it's really technically one cycle divided by 1.5 seconds. And so you get 0.67 cycles per second. So that's what the frequency in Hertz is telling you is the number of cycles that are occurring every one second. Now, what about part B? What is the length of the pendulum on Earth? So let's clear away a few things and let's just rewrite the first two answers that we had. So how can we calculate the length of the pendulum when it's on the Earth? Well, let's start with this formula. T is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. We have the period and we know the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. We just need to isolate L in this equation. So let's do some algebra. Let's square both sides of the equation. So on the left it's going to be T squared. 2 pi squared is going to be 2 squared is 4 and then pi times pi is pi squared. And then when we square root, I mean when we take the square of a square root, both the square and the square root will cancel, and so we're just going to get L over G. Now we need to get L by itself, so we're going to multiply both sides by G and then divide by 4 pi squared. By doing this, on the right side, we can cancel G, and we can also cancel 4 pi squared. So we're just going to get L on the right side. So we could say that L is equal to everything that we see here. So the length of the pendulum is going to be the gravitational acceleration, G, times the square of the period, divided by 4 pi squared. So that's the formula that we can use to get the length of the pendulum. Now let's go ahead and plug everything in. And let's write the units as well. So G is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we're going to multiply that by the square of the period. So that's 1.5 seconds squared. And then let's divide that by 4 pi squared, which doesn't contain units. So we can see that second squared will cancel with S squared here. And so L is going to be in meters. So let's plug in 9.8 times 1.5 squared divided by, now you want to put this in parentheses, otherwise your calculator will divide by 4 and then multiply by pi squared. And you'll get a different answer. So let's divide by 4 pi squared in parentheses, and you should get 0.5585 meters. 
So this is the length of the pendulum on Earth that has these features. If you are transported to an unknown planet where the gravity of that planet is different from the Earth, how can you determine the gravitational acceleration of that planet? Well, this problem will help you to see how. All you need is a simple pendulum. If you know the length of the pendulum and how many swings that the pendulum make in the given time period, you have all that you need to calculate or even estimate the uh, gravitational acceleration of that planet. So let's work on this problem. The first thing we need to do is calculate the period. The period is going to be the time divided by the number of cycles. So this particular pendulum makes 28 complete swings or 28 cycles in a time period of 45 seconds. So let's divide 45 seconds by 28 cycles and this will give us the period which is 1.607 seconds per cycle. So this tells us the time it takes to complete one cycle. So it takes 1.607 seconds to make one complete swing. So that's the period. Now that we know the period, we could use this formula to calculate the gravitational acceleration. But we need to rearrange that formula. So like we did last time, let's go ahead and square both sides of this equation. So we're going to get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared and the square root symbol will disappear, so it's going to be times L over G. Now we need to get G by itself. So let's multiply both sides by G over T squared. So the left side I'm going to multiply by G over T squared. On the right side, G is going to cancel. On the left side, T squared is going to cancel. So the only thing that we have on the left side is G. So we have g is equal to 4 pi squared times l, and on the bottom we have t squared. So this is the formula that we could use to calculate the gravitational acceleration of any planet using a simple pendulum. All we need to know is the length of the pendulum and the period, or the time it takes to make one complete swing. So for this problem, it's going to be 4 pi squared times the length of the uh, pendulum, which is 80 centimeters, or if you divide that by 100, that's going to be 0.80 meters, and divided by the square of the period. The period is 1.607 seconds. And don't forget to square it. So the answer is 12.2 meters per second squared. So this is the gravitational acceleration of the planet. Now how many g's is this with respect to the Earth? If we take that number and divide it by the gravitational acceleration of the Earth, this is going to be 1.24. So it's 1.24 g's. So it's 1.24 times greater than the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. So that's what that figure means whenever you see it. It simply compares the acceleration that you're experiencing with the acceleration of the Earth. Number four, what is the length of a simple pendulum used in a grandfather clock that has one second between its tick and its talk on Earth? So let's draw a picture. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem if you want to. So here is our simple pendulum. And let's label three points, point A, B, and point C. Actually, let's get rid of that. So it's going to take one second for the grandfather clock to go from A to C, where it's going to make the first noise, it's tick noise. Then it's going to take another second for it to go from C to A, where it's going to make the talk noise. 
So it's like tick, tock, tick, tock, and it just oscillates between A and C. So what you need to realize is that the period is not one second, but two seconds. It takes two seconds to make a complete swing. The one second, it's just, it, it's half of a cycle. It's going from A to C, but doesn't include the return trip. So the period for a grandfather clock is two seconds. So with that information, we can now calculate the length of the simple pendulum that is in the grandfather clock. And so we're going to use this formula. L is equal to GT squared divided by 4 pi squared. So on Earth, G is 9.8. The period for the grandfather clock is 2 seconds. And then divided by 4 pi squared. And let's put that in parentheses as well. And I almost forgot to square the period, so don't make that mistake. So the answer is going to be 0.993 meters. So that, that's the length of the grandfather clock given a period of two seconds. Number five, a certain pendulum has a period of 1.7 seconds on Earth. What is the period of this pendulum on a planet that has a gravitational acceleration of 15 meters per second squared? Well, in order to calculate the period, we can use this formula. It's 2 pi times the square root of L over G. But let's write down what we know in this problem and what we need to find. So the period on the Earth, let's call it T1, that's 1.7 seconds. Now we know that the gravitational acceleration on the Earth, we'll call that G1, is 9.8 meters per second squared. We wish to calculate the new period on some other planet, T2, and we're given the gravitational acceleration of that planet, which is 15 meters per second squared. So we have T1 and G1. How can we calculate T2 if we know G2? Well, let's make a ratio of this equation. We're going to divide T2 by T1. So if T is equal to what we see here, T2 is going to be 2 pi square root L over G2. Now the reason why I didn't write L2 over G2 is because L doesn't change. We're dealing with the same pendulum that was on the Earth that is now in this new planet. So therefore, L is constant. We don't need to change the subscript for L. Only G and T changes. So T1 is going to be 2 pi times the square root of L over G1. So we can cross out 2 pi and we can cancel L. And so we're left with T2 over T1 is equal to the square root of 1 over G2 divided by the square root of 1 over G1. Now let's multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of G1. Doing so will give us a 1 in the denominator. So it's going to be the square root of this is 1 times G1. So we'll have G1 on the top. G2 is going to stay on the bottom. And then this simply becomes 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So we could say that T2 over T1 is equal to the square root of G1 over G2. And then finally, we can multiply both sides by T1 to cancel this. So we have this equation. The second period, T2, is going to equal the first period times the square root of G1 over G2. Now let's plug in some values. T1 is 1.7, G1 is 9.8, G2 is 15. So 1.7 times the square root of 9.8 over 15, that's going to be 1.37 seconds. So that's the new period. 
So as we could see, we increased the gravitational acceleration from 9.8 to 15. And because g is on the bottom, it's inversely related to t. So as we increase g, the period decreased. It went from 1.7 to 1.37 seconds. So these two are inversely related. Number six, the period of a simple pendulum with mass m is t. Which of the following expressions represent the period of a simple pendulum with mass 2m? Well, if we write the formula for the simple pendulum, notice that it doesn't depend on the mass. So if we change the mass from m to 2m, it's not going to change the period. The period was initially t, it's going to remain t. So for a simple pendulum, the period is independent from the mass. It doesn't change with the mass. So the answer is going to be D. There's no change.